Alright, so in order to make Raymond Blanc's baked apple and caramel sauce recipe, this is all of the things that you're going to need. Mainly some white bread, about two slices, four or five apples. These are best quality baked apple that you can find in your country. Pistachios, flaked almonds, two types of sugar, mainly icing sugar and caster sugar. Some plain butter, apple juice and the most important, the calvados or apple brandy. Now for the utensils I'm going to need of course an apple car. I'm going to use a, one of these cooking brush and an oval pie dish in which I'm going to use to bake the apple. Now uh, as a side note all of the utensils, the dish I'm using plus the book from Raymond Blanc Kitchen Secret is all available on my new Amazon page. Check it out. I've put the link in the video description. And now let's make that Michelin star chef recipe. Now the first step in this recipe is to prepare the apples uh, so that we can bake them. So it all means that we need to remove some of the core apparently and leave that little bit at the top intact. So we're going to try it. Okay, so it says that first off, take a knife, like a paring knife, and we first going to need to have this part flatten a little bit. So it says you remove a little bit of the apple. All right, so we can make it flat and it can stand on its own. Beautiful. Now we're going to need to remove a lot of the core in here. So apparently one of the, con the techniques consists of getting a knife and you have to pierce basically three quarters of the way to the core. So basically we're going to core the apple until here and leave that little bit here. So apparently it says that you need to take a knife and make an incision in the apple past the core, which is a bit hard already to basically kind of prepare your work when you're going to core the apple. Next I'm going to try that. So you need to core the apple all the way to the incision. So the incision is here. So keep in mind that you need to go apparently three quarters of the way. So look, I have no idea if it's going to work, but I'm happy to try. All right. It seems that it works. Look at that. So basically you're going to repeat the process for each apple. Once you've cooled all of your apple, the next step consists of taking some butter. So you melt a little bit of butter in a pan eh? and using a brush like that, we're just going to basically brush the apple everywhere because we're going to coat the apple apparently with caster sugar. And when this is done, apparently you sprinkle the apple with sugar. Right. And when it's finished, you remove the excess and you just put them gently on the tray in the back. So you repeat the same process for each of the apple. Perfect. So this is the end result. So I'm just using three apples here because I'm making a small portion, but don't mind me. Uh, so this is going to have to cook in the oven, of course, before the last step consists of putting an additional piece of butter, apparently, on top of the apple like that. And we're going to bake this in an uh, oven without fan. It says do not use a fan forced oven. It has to be just a standard convection oven for 35 to 40 minutes at 170 degrees Celsius, which is 30, uh, 338 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got my converter next to me. So I'm going to put this in the oven for 35 to 40 minutes until they're cooked. So keep an eye on it while they're cooking, making sure they don't crack open and, uh, you know, fall apart. Huh? While the apple are baking, the next step consists of making your caramel sauce. So sorry about the view to put you in the pan like this, but uh, apparently we need really to see what's happening. So first you need to start from where it says with one tablespoon of water in the bottom of a small pan like this to make your caramel. There's no heat under and we need to sprinkle 50 grams apparently of sugar all over and wait for the sugar to be, uh, and, and water to be absolutely absorbed. So you see it starts to absorb, so you have to wait maybe a minute or so. Okay, when it's like this, and all the water is, um, you know, mixed with the sugar, so there's nothing dry, put this on a high heat or medium to high, and I'm gonna wait until this transforms into a caramel. As the temperature rises, this is gonna happen. All of your water and sugar melts into that kind of little boiling mix. So from here, do not leave your stove and keep an eye on it because it goes from clear to brown 
in an instant but you just don't know when so you just need to look at it and wait until it happens okay I'm just showing you, you see these little traces of brown and that starts to happen that means that the caramel is going to get brown from here very very quickly so I'm moving the pan like this because when you make caramel you never use a spoon to stir or anything like that you just use these movements control your heat and move your caramel around make sure it doesn't burn to a crisp done that's the right color immediately I'm gonna put my juice in Whoa. and this is what happened so be careful it's normal and from here you can see everything is mixed together I've got my apple juice and I'm gonna wait until this comes back properly to the boil perfect now optionally on the video from Raymond Blanc he adds about a tablespoon or two of diced apple these are fresh apples okay mix that in my heat is on lower now eh? from here we're gonna add the famous Calvados one tablespoon of booze which is basically apple brandy I like a good tablespoon in and the mix has gone cold again and I'm gonna bring it back to the boil Finally, the last step is to add some thickening agent which is here uh, I don't know if you can see arrow root which is tapioca flour so you mix that powder looks like uh, corn flour in a bit of water and you pour it in your in your mix and this is virtually just a thickening agent when the arrow root is in you leave it to cook just a minute or so for the apple to cook and the sauce is going to thicken and this is the result look at that this is an absolute sauce a syrupy kind of caramel leave it on the side to cool down turn the heat off and we're going to use it later okay well the sauce is done i just took the apples out of the oven and we're going to be ready to make the garnish and serve now as you can see i maybe let them a little bit too long as this one didn't hold so that can happen that's what i've made free but either this one or this one looks like a pretty good candidate for the plating and now for the garnish so this is simple but this is also what's going to give that extra flavor to the dish that explosion of flavor mixing pistachios flaked almonds together with icing sugar and then we're going to sprinkle with a little bit again of the calvados so just a tiny bit after that toss everything together so you got the whole mix covered so I have to say that this is what's mentioned in the recipe that's good for one apple I think you should put way more than that multiply this per apple to have that mix perfect when this is done we're gonna put it on a baking tray and toast it in the oven baking tray I'm just making the mix I've just got like I said this is not much it says you need to scatter it on the tray uh, so it can caramelize because we're going to use the grill and you have to sprinkle with a little bit of bread when this is done we're going to put this under the grill we're going to broil it for eight to ten minutes until just caramelized oh the garnish is out and what i can say welcome to crispy town guys look at that i think the bread did not survive the blast um, and when it comes to the rest it looks pretty good i mean yeah it's a bit stuck to the bottom i'm gonna have to scrap it off put that on a plate but anyway this is our candied mix and now we're gonna serve and plate the whole dish so i'm not the best at plating like i always say but i'll put a dash of caramel sauce to start with where the apple is gonna stand i'm gonna put one of the baked apple try to make the good side on and then i'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this that's what it says on the recipe this candied pistachios and almond everywhere and when this is done apparently the last touch is to pour caramel sauce basically over and let it make its way on the plate but what i want to do now before we go quickly 
is maybe do the spoon test or try to see how we can try this. So let me try to see how fragile this is. Oh, look at that. The skin is nicely falling off, so it's really cooked. Let's try to use a knife to see the texture. Mm. Take a bit of the sauce there, some... Oh, look at that. Mm. Yeah, it's very nice. You can really... You can really feel that... So you got the tanginess of the apples. Oh, look, it's falling apart. Wow. Tanginess of the apple mixed with this caramel sauce and also the crunchiness of these almonds and mm. that is pretty good anyway guys this is a beautiful little recipe and i try to understand bit by bit by making this, this recipe what they think you know the michelin star chef and eating this it's really these layers of complexity the caramel the apple the candied almonds and pistachios that elevate the dish into another level honestly a brilliant little thing to try at home but that's it for today i hope you like it of course tell me what you think about michelin star recipes and do you want to see more of this because i'm just doing a tryout on new series and new ways of cooking to try to please a bit everyone so let me know in the comments and i'll see you next time bye bye